you know, I just read through the book of first, I mean, yeah, first John tonight, earlier, earlier today, that is, and I took some notes, and uh, let me talk about a few of those notes there. So in chapter one, uh, they were talking about how they saw, they touched, they heard the word of life, Jesus, that eternal life. And they're saying, we write these things that your joy may be full, right? And then he goes down and says, in God, there's no darkness at all. God is total light. There's no darkness in God at all. And those who are in the light follow after him, right? Now, if you read chapter one, you'll be, get kind of confused unless you know the Bible and you read the whole chap the whole book, right? Because he says down at the bottom, he says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But right before that, he says, those who sin are in darkness. But then you go to the chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and those, he says, those that don't keep his commandments are in darkness. But then right after that, he says, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, then you call God a liar. Because God says that he came down here Jesus, the image of the Godhead bodily, came down here as a propitiation for our sin, right? And so, if you go to, um, what chapter is it? Is it, in, is it in chapter 3 or 4? I didn't, I didn't put the right chapter, I don't think. But I think it's, it's in 3 or 4, and it might be in 5. But if you go to chapter 4, or wherever it's at, 3, 4, or 5, it says, what is His commandment? to believe on His Son whom He sent, and to love one another, to love the brethren. We know by His Spirit in us, we know we're His by His Spirit in us, we know we're in the truth by His Spirit in us. Greater is He that is in you than He, to the, he that is in the world. They speak of the world because they are of the world, and the world hears them, but they can't hear us. Because we're not of this world. The world is wicked, right? And so if you read chapter 1, you'll get confused. Because the definition of sin, from God's perspective, is to not believe on His Son and to not love one another. Because if you love one another, you, you're above the law. You know, you don't need a... You actually are a law to yourself because you've got the Holy Spirit. You have the truth. And he talks about, you know all things. Uh, to keep his commandments, you love one another. Chapter 2, if you hate your brother in darkness, love not the world. The world passes away. So that tells you time and space is temporary. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life uh, is all of the world. But you have an, an unction from, you have an unction and know all things. Jesus and the Father together are one. If you deny Jesus, you deny the Father. That's my note. So, in other words, if you deny Jesus, Jesus, God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, they're all one. This is why he says, love the brethren, because you're one. Now, there's a lot of people who lie about me, make up stuff, talk about me, because I'm a faith alone in Jesus alone. Believing on Jesus, faith alone, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8. And the reason they attack me is because they can't hear me. Now, you heard what I just read in 1 John. They speak of the world. They're divided, division. How come they're in denominations? Actually, denomination means to dename. Dename is division. I'm Methodist. I'm Baptist. I'm Pentecostal. I'm this. I'm a cult. I'm an ism. Why are they in these different boxes and divisions? If they're one in Christ, why, is there, why are they separated? How come they can't hear 
the unity that I speak to all believers. Why do I do this? Why do I upload these videos? Why do I, why do, I do this? Because I'm actually trying to show the real believers that you're not crazy, that these churches have been infiltrated by legalists and Jezebels to divide the body of Christ. And you're not crazy. When I'm dead and gone, I've already sent out a, a, a thumb drive to somebody. I'd like to send out four or five more or tw 20 more to send these messages out on thumb drive. So when I'm dead and gone, these messages will be loaded, loaded up. The division that they're causing, they hate me because I speak the truth. They hate me because I saw the Shekinah glory. They hate me because I speak not of this world, but above. In chapter 3, he says, uh, because you're, uh, you're, the, you're the sons of God, the world knows you not. The son of God, Jesus, just like they persecuted Jesus, the son of God, they're going to persecute you. Why do they persecute me? I don't name them individually and persecute them, but they name me individually and persecute me. Why are they chasing me? Why does Wally Coyote chase down Roadrunner? Roadrunner's just eating the seed of the Word of God and resting and in peace, and he's, he's walking in the Spirit, and he's just flowing. But Wally Coyote is attacking. See, they want me to respond. I'm not going to respond to their foolishness. You know, the Bible says, whether you argue or laugh with a foolish man, there's no rest in Proverbs. So I want you to really step back and think about people in your life because it's not about me. It's not really about me. This is a fractal holographic truth. So as a son, son of God, it's happening to all the sons of God out there and it's happening to all the daughters of God. The same thing that's happening to me is happening to you. And if you follow in these footsteps where you're speaking the truth and you're not backing down, they're going to attack you. Even, even the Republican people, the Republican Party, most of them are not saved. They're just religious but lost. But even they get attacked by the left. So much less if you got somebody speaking against the denominations, which means D-name. You know it means D-name because uh, nomination is like, what's the, what's the denomination on that dollar bill? You, they're D-naming. They're breaking the unity, and they're not bringing unity. They're bringing division. Now, the world thinks the Christians are causing division. So if another Christian thinks I'm causing division, then they're of the world. They might be saved, but their mindset is of the world, right? They're just believing what some preacher told them, or they're just getting some kind of kudos from somebody because they they're in their they're still in their um they're still in the mindset of not love if somebody really was out to to fix me and my doctrine and and teach me the right way they would reach out and uh say oh I, i'll be glad to help you understand something i'll talk to them <laughs> but no they don't do that they just flat out attack. Why? Because I know more than them. <laughs> I know more truth than them. And so they're jealous deep down. You, if you sit in a church long enough and some guy, some, some guy comes in, he becomes a Sunday school teacher or whatever, and he knows more Bible than the preacher, the preacher will get jealous and try to kick him out. Because <laughs> he knows more than the preacher. Because he's in the flesh. It's okay if somebody knows more than you. You learn from them. You want people to know more than you because you can, it can pull you up and raise you up. And it's not even about knowing. It's just believing what it says in the Bible. The Bible says you know all things. You have an unction from the Holy One. You don't need anybody to teach you. You don't need anybody to teach you. But the reason they attack and the reason they create these little boxes that they don't want you out of is because they make money off of you. It's money. It's all about money. Mammon. And uh, I had a sister in Christ send me a text tonight, and she said, you know, 
she was thankful of what she learned, whatever, whatever she's going through. And she said that snake on the pole represents Jesus, but they put the dollar sign because they want you to worship money. It's the anti. So when you look at the ambulance, it has a snake on the pole. That goes back to John chapter 3, verse 14. As Moses lifted up sir, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him not should not perish but have everlasting life. So the snake that you see on the dollar bill, on the ambulance, points back to Jesus. But the archons, the fallen angels, try to hide it and they want to magnify man. They want to magnify division. They want to magnify fighting. They want to magnify disunity. They want, they, want to, they want to keep you in the drama so that you don't see these deep spiritual truths. I spent 30 years studying the Bible, the types and shadows, the allegories, the parables, the prophets, Proverbs, Psalms, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the tribulation, the millennium. I spent my whole life studying the truth that's all i studied was truth my whole life i wanted to know the truth from a child when i was a child i'd sit there and listen to charles stanley and my mom and my sister would be running around the house crazy and i'm sitting here thinking why aren't y'all listening to this why aren't y'all listening to this and they didn't want to hear it they were of the world they loved the world So you go to chapter 3, sons of God, you purify yourself because you have this hope in you that when you see Jesus, you'll be like him when he appears. And in Jesus is no sin. So there you go right there. In chapter 3, he clarifies what it means to be have no sin. In him is no sin. In Christ is no sin. How do you get in Christ and be covered by Christ? How do you get the covering of Jesus? You get the covering of Jesus because you believe on Jesus, receive Christ in your heart by faith. I actually had one of the, uh, the legalist agents hear me say that you receive Christ into your heart by faith, and they attack that even though there's Bible verses about that. You receive the Holy Spirit into your heart by faith. God sends out, sends out the seven spirits from the throne of God to see whose heart is right by Him. It's all about your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow all the issues of life. These people, these people, don't even know that they're agents of Satan to attack your heart. And I was going to do a message about this. I, maybe I hope I remember to do this. But it's all about attacking your heart. The drama, the division, the fighting, the he said, she said, they did this, or they said this, or they went here, or they looked at that, or they drank that, or they smoked that. That's division. Everybody has um, weaknesses. And that's the purpose of the repeat cycle. Source is hitting us. Jesus, the truth is hitting us all day long. And so as the truth hits us, what does it do? The truth is hitting us by His Word, by His Spirit, by circumstances, by authority, by other people, by the repeat, the universe turning around you, the hologram means Holy Word. Everything's hitting you over and over to move you to your new state, that you become an overcomer. And actually what happens is, the more you see the eternal truths, the more you see the archetypes, the more you see past time and more you see past the game. There's no new game. Wally Coyote uses the Acme tools, but they're just the same games. And they, the Jezebel, the legalist, the Delilah, Babylon, the news, the media, the world, the flesh, product, there's no new game. The, I'll scroll through just to see the game. I see the game. If you gaze upon one image on one of their apps, they'll start putting more images on that. Google Nest, Google, Yahoo, email. They're all trying to get into your mind, your heart, 
to pull you out of God's will and to pull you back to the world, the flesh, and pride life. They want you to argue. They want you to fight. They want you to defend yourself. They want you to say, you're a liar and you're evil and you're the one that's evil and you're the ones doing this. You're, you know, they want you back and forth with them. Why? Because they want to make you mad. Look, this is, this is what I was going to say in that, uh, that other, I'll just say it now. The reason a narcissist really gets into your world, think about it. The reason the narcissist gets into your world or tries to is to get you to hate one another. To get you to hate them. Because if you, I was reading First John, love one another. So, they want you to hate somebody. Why? Because it says, what are his commandments? To believe on his son and love one another. Chapter 3 talks about love the brethren. It says, if you, see, here's another reason they want you, the narcissist tries to get into your world. If you hate somebody, you hate your ex, you hate your ex-wife, your ex-girlfriend, or your, your ex-boss, or your ex-friend, or your anybody. If you hate anybody, you step out of John, 1 John chapter 3, because he says if you believe on his son, you love the brethren, whatever we ask for, we receive. Because you're doing what is pleasing and righteous, right in the sight of God. So if you're doing what's right, what if you're doing what God asks you to do, to believe on His Son, to love everybody, love your enemy, love your neighbor, forgive, no bitterness, stay in peace, stay in joy. Really, you live like a king. You got heat, you got water, you got air conditioning, you got paved roads, you got a house, you got clothes, you got food, even if you have to eat beans and rice for a while. I mean, I went to the grocery store and there was some corn and beans, 99 cent, you know. I throw some onions in there and some garlic. And my point is, you have everything you need. The Bible talks about that, that God is going to take care of you. But they try to put these people around you that have more, and you think, oh, i got to have more. Andrew Tate's all laughing because you got a job. Well, if all the rich people didn't have employees, they wouldn't be rich. To be dependable and faithful in the job, God is looking at. It's eternal stuff. And find a job you like. Find a career you like. And if you find a job you like, even if you started a business, you know, if you run a business, you still have to manage it. It's work too. <laughs> you got to manage the managers. You got to manage the the regional managers who manage the managers, and you got to deal with problems, and you got to you got to watch their stock, and you got to watch the media and the social media, and make sure your corporation's not being uh, defamed and lied about. You know, my point is, we're down here to do a job, to labor. To give out the good news. But also, your body's a ship. You're, if you just sit around and watch TV and play video games all day, your body's not designed for that. Your body's designed to work. Your body's designed to move. Your body's designed to fast. And your body's designed to hit against stress. And so if your body's designed against stress, then these de demonic agents who are trying to stress you Eventually, you'll overcome that, and you'll see the repeat pattern that all legalists are the same. All narcissists are the same. All Jezebels are the same. All Delilahs are the same. All drug heads are the same. All drunks are the same. They say the same thing. There's no new game. There's no new pattern. These are people who follow patterns. So these legalistic preachers who say they believe the Bible, and it says right here in uh, first John to believe on his son that's what is what is his commandments to believe on his son 
to love one another. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, truth's not in us. So when they attack you, you're a sinner or you're, you're this. When they attack you, for no reason, is that love? I could get on I could get on there and say sad guru is the devil, sad guru. I could sit on there and say the Gnostics are the devil or the, the new age or the I will say that about the, the witches though. <laughs> the witches are crazy. The witches they have actually stepped into another reality. <laughs> but you know, I'll still talk to a witch and try to get them saved, you know. It's dangerous when you talk to a witch too much because they actually they actually can do remote viewing and stuff like that. And they actually can send uh, demons to your house. But if you if you stay under, you claim the blood and you ain't got to worry about it because the demon has no power for Jesus. Because if, if you ever have a witch attack you, they will get knocked back. But cry out to Jesus and tell him what's going on and he'll, he'll knock them back. Anyway. Let me just go, let me find, go ahead and finish this up. Let me see if there's any notes on here. That, what is commandment? What is his commandment? To believe on the Son whom he sent. To love one another. Um, we know by his, we know that we are in him. We dwell in him by his spirit. The spirit of truth in us. Uh, if you purify yourself, because you look, you're looking for his appearance. In him is no sin. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 clarified. In Him is no sin. So if you read chapter 1, you'll say, well, I sinned. I must not be saved. No. In Jesus is no sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It's true. It's not in us. So what is he, it sounds like a contradiction in chapter 1. Read it. But it's not. From the earthly perspective, it looks like a contradiction. But from a spiritual perspective, outside of the natural. You're hid in Christ and God. You have His Spirit. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Because of that, you have no sin in Him. But read it. That's in chapter 3. In Him is no sin. Oh, let's see. Let me look at one more page and I'll be done. If you walk in darkness, you hate your, you hate your brother. Uh, the anointing teaches you all things. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. What is righteousness? To believe on His Son, to love one another. You can set boundaries. That doesn't mean you don't. You can't call them out. Actually, holding people accountable is a good thing. Chapter four: Faith overcomes the world. So the word faith and the word believe are the same word. Faith, believe, truth faithful those are the same words really if you unfold them let's see if you hate your brother you walk in darkness love not the world for the world passes away jesus the father in one he if you if you deny jesus you deny the father but if you if you receive Jesus, you receive the Father. Jesus is the image of the Godhead bodily. By Him all things consist. He created all things through Jesus. And so Jesus is the forerunner, and He set the pace and the path, and we're following in series and in sequence after. And so when you get all that in your mind, you, 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 count, you count it up, you pedal up the truth in your mind, just like He says to, to count up the number of the beast, to pedal up the number. You actually realize the mark of the beast is the old Adamic nature. The 666 cube flesh mind is the AI flesh mind, the old Adam and not the new Adam. So until you get born again, you are of the world. You are going to take 666. You are going to uh, beg for 666 because you think that the AI machine beast is going to solve all your problems. Because it's built into a human to worship something. And so you're going to either worship your girlfriend or your wife or your kids or your parents or your denomination or your preacher. They're worshiping some, some 
thing down here in the 3D, and that's why when you speak against it, and not that you're picking anybody out, but you just speak the truth, they have to attack you because you're taking away their security blanket. Their security blanket is that box that they're living in. But you're outside of all boxes in Christ. When you say faith alone and Jesus alone, you unfold the boxes and you just step out of all of them. I'm not a Methodist. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm not, I'm just a believer in Jesus. I'm not anything except for hid in Christ. Who are you? I believe in Jesus. No, who are you really? I mean, I actually had people say that about 10 years. Who are you really? I believe in Jesus. They thought I was acting. They thought I was an actor. Who are you? I'm a believer. I'm a Bible believer. I believe what Jesus said. I believe the Bible. I rightly divide it. That's, I'm a truth seeker. No, really, who are you? That's who I am. They can't believe it. The Gnostics can't believe that. Because they're uh, the Dematria people can't believe that. Because they're not really seeking the truth. Because if they were seeking the truth, they'd believe on Jesus. But they deny Jesus through their logic. But their logic is earth plane and it's not spiritual plane. Sad Guru, he's he doesn't believe in Jesus. He'll mention Jesus, but he puts him up there. He puts Jesus. Uh, see, Jesus is eternal life. If you want a fellowship with Jesus, you're fellowshipping with eternal life. You left the death cult. See, the whole world is in darkness. The whole world is a death cult. And it's a division. And they can blame the Christians for the division. And they think the 666 uh, mark of the beast is going to bring unity. It's not. It's just going to be more draconian. And so the draconian system is division because they hate each other, but they need each other. And it's like, it's kind of like you see uh, you see two women that they're talking about each other, they hate each other. Then they go sit down at a restaurant and all of them are together and they go to the bathroom together. <laughs> and they'll say stuff like, you say, well, I don't, you didn't like that person. She'll say, well, the, the best thing to do is keep your enemies closer. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Keep your enemies close. They have that kind of weird upside down logic that doesn't make sense you know these people are crazy they're they're in a reverse bizarro world and once you get saved you step out of that and it's a process so the more they attack the more they lie the more they uh persecute it tells you in first john that because they persecuted jesus they 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 attack jesus they're going to attack you. That verse in and itself tells you that you're one with Christ and what happened to him is going to happen to you and that tells you right there it's a fractal hologram. There's no new storyline. The same story that he walked down here, you're walking down here. Now you might not be ready for it but he so he won't put more on you than you can bear. But the same path he walked, you're walking and that tells you right there, it's just a fractal, repeat, holographic story repeating every day over and over. And so that if it's happening every day, every year, then it's happening moment by moment. You might not be able to see it, but the same game is happening. Not only is it happening with people outside, but it's happening inside you. Your worst enemy is yourself, right? So when your flesh mind from the past or the old habits of the past try to get in and tear you down and pull you down that's the internal battle of the old adamic nature attacking the new you and so your worst enemy is not without your enemies in within and so that's why if you renew your mind and you stay focused and you don't get distracted with the drama you can pay attention see when they come at you they're trying to get a response and they're trying to get you in uh, in the flesh. If you're in the spirit walk, what is the spirit walk? Just love and truth. Faith, love, truth. Love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. So these agents are bombarding you with anything they can 
to get you to respond in the energy of the flesh. To drop you down on their level. Because they don't know you. They can't. What does it say in 1 John? They don't know you. They can't hear you. They didn't know Jesus. That's why they killed him. They don't know you. Who are you? I told you who I am. I'm a son of God by faith alone. In Jesus alone, I receive Christ in my heart by faith. I'm born again. I'm saved and I have eternal life. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You can be saved too if you, if you choose. You can be in the family with us. But you will choose not to if you reject the fact that you're a sinner and you choose to do your own thing. Because if you choose to do your own thing, you're going to hate everybody. You're not going to love your neighbor. You might put on the show, the hour show like you do. And I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm not saying you can't hold people accountable. Sometimes you have to call people out on their junk if they're coming at you. But if they're, you know, giving you your space and your peace and they're not messing with you, it's like if they come to the, to the front door, I have a shotgun. I mean, I don't want to use it, but I'd have to if, if I had to, you know. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. That's between every man. But you have a right to defend yourself. If you look at David and Solomon and all the kings of Israel, they were, they were defending their nation, you know. And your house or your home or your whatever you're in is like a little nation, your peace. You have a right to defend your peace, your business, whatever you're doing. The, the reason that you set boundaries with these people, the reason God allows you to know all things is because you've already seen the game. You already know they're coming in to steal, kill, and destroy because that's all they know. They don't know anything else. Because Wally Coyote has no power. They're weak. They're, they're, they're beggars. We're all beggars at the cross, but they stay a beggar. They, they, they're just weak. The energy, the, they put, why do you think they put so much attention on Outward Show? Look at me. Look at my selfie. Look at this. It's all about Outward Show. Why? Because there's nothing inside. It's only outside. They're dead in trespasses and sin. They have no spiritual understanding. They only know division. They only know accusing and lying and attacking. And that's all they know. These people are crazy. <laughs> you can't be around them. And, and when you don't play the game, they attack you. You can walk up to one of them, they start talking. Can you look at that? Look at that. And you're sitting there listening to them. And they might pull you in for a second. You catch yourself and say, oh, wait a minute. They're pulling me into some kind of weird reality. Uh, they're just as guilty. We're all just as guilty that they're pointing there. We've all been guilty of stuff. And they're pointing their finger at everybody. It's like, oh, wait a minute. They're trying to pull me in. And you just walk off. And when you don't participate in the flesh mind, and you only participate in the spirit mind, they can't even, they don't, they take as a, as an insult, even though it's the best thing for them, but they get rebuked. But they take it as an insult, you know. The best thing I ever did in the last few years is today. I went through the book of First John. And it just verified everything that in Christ, and when you when you believe on His Son, when you believe on His Son, and you you love your neighbor as yourself, you don't want to do harm. He says, "Ask whatever you will, and it will be given to you." Just those two things: believe on Jesus, love your neighbor as yourself. Whatever you ask, he will give it to you. That's what it says.
What we ask, we receive. Because you're doing what's pleasing in His sight. That ought to be, I mean, we're talking about God. Whatever you ask God, He'll give it to you. I mean, the whole world is yours then. But you got to learn how to manage it. you got to learn how to be set boundaries and stabilize everything and not be drawn into greed and and pride and see God ain't going to give you something that's going to let you go into the the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He's not going to give you something to let you stay in that. Whatever you ask, you receive. But you you got two conditions there. Believe on Jesus, receive Jesus, and love your neighbor, love the brethren. All right, I would say if I was you to read 1 John and don't get caught up in chapter 1 and get confused. Read the whole book and understand that his command, what are his commandments? To believe on his son whom he sent and to love your neighbor. Don't walk in hate and bitterness and unforgiveness. That's the secret of 1 John. Those, the commandments are clear. If you walk in those commandments... You're in tune with Him. And if you're in tune with Him, you're in tune with the universe. And the universe is on your side. Because actually, God is like the universe. Because it's all in Him. Everything's in Him. Through Jesus, all things were created. It's like a projection. It's like if you went on the computer and you created a video game and you, you breathe life into those those 2D characters and you gave them life but it was your creation so and you created it out of your own person and everything in that video came is a reflection of you do you understand so the un everything in the universe is the angels the universe the humans the animals everything's a reflection of Jesus because it's by his hand that where all things were created and so he did the will of the Father as the Son of God. And you, as sons of God, are going to be birthed to follow after that in series, in sequence. Even though you try to win people out of the world, out of Babylon, they're going to attack you because you're not from here. It's just kind of like if somebody's not in your, from your country, you're kind of suspicious, you know. Till you get to know them and realize they're just just like you, same kind. They have the same dream, same goals as you, unless they're evil. Anyway, my point is: read the whole chat, read the whole book, not just the chapter, and not just one verse. Read the whole chapter, and then read the whole book, and put the put the truth through a a Turing machine. Take each verse, rightly divide it, compare it. What was the what was the guy meaning when he wrote it? What uh, what did he mean by this? And compare it. Read some commentaries and and different opinions and all the little pieces of the pie come together into a whole truth. You know, when you take all the pieces, you see the whole. Then you can actually start to see the pieces in the whole and the whole in the pieces, and so. Your world, whatever you're doing in your world, is happening to everybody else's world. It might not be the exact situation, but it's similar. And if you talk to another enough people, you're going to see the exact th same things. If I go talk to another rideshare driver, they're dealing with the same battles that I deal with. Same battles. If I go talk to another... Uh, a carpenter, a plumber, electrician, they're dealing with the same battles that I've dealt with. It's all a repeat. And then you might say, well, if it's all a repeat, why? what's the use of it? Because it's a worship service. It's a worship service. And if God is given to give you anything you want, that is, I mean... During the worship service, the worship that you're living as a worship vessel to God, if you're worshiping God and He will give you anything you want, what more do you want? 
<laughs> you got it all. God is a creator. God is outside of time. God is outside of space. He's the creator. By he, In Him, we exist. In Him, we live and breathe and move and have our being. So if you created this video game and, and you, you breathe life into those players in the video game and they're sustained by you, as long as you exist, they exist. I mean, shouldn't they be thankful that you gave, breathe life into them? That 2D computer? That 2D screen? You breathe life into those computer characters, shouldn't they be thankful? You're their creator. You're their, you created them. And you breathe life into them. But they don't, for them to hate you? You gave them some free will. You gave them, they can, they can run across the, the multiverse inside that computer. You give them space to move around. And then one day, one day, when it's all done, you, you reach down there and you pull them out of 2D into 3D. So what's God going to do? He's pulling us out of 3D into 5D. We're going to be higher than the angels. We're going to have a spiritual body. So one day, we'll leave this, this uh, uh, planet, play net. The planets are the plans of God. We'll believe this planet this cartoon, 3D cartoon, and we move into the 5D, the real world. But this is real, but it's just a, it's a smaller, it's a, it's a subversion of the real real, you know. But you can step into that world right now in your mind by faith because your mind is spirit. You can worship God now because what are you going to be doing in eternity? You get bored with 3D. You should be bored with 3D once you hit about 40 years old, I would say. And so this place gets boring. And so what are you going to do for eternity? You'll be glad to worship God. You'll be glad to be praising God. Because this, <laughs> the, the natural realm, the flesh, this place is boring. It's the same stuff over and over. So the only thing is exci only thing exciting is to see people grow spiritually, see people get born again, get the word out, do some hobbies, do some skills, go get a job you enjoy, create a job you enjoy. That's what's enjoyable. Talk to brothers and sisters in Christ and see, watch them grow. That's where it's at. That's the real joy. But it's not in this mundane repeat but you can as you're here you can learn what not to eat what to eat how to how to control the cycles of your body how the cycles of time work you can already see what's going to happen before it happens i mean it's obvious the see even jesus told uh somebody that he says y'all can discern i think the the, the uh, pharisees or he says you can discern the weather by observing the weather patterns but you can't discern the spiritual stuff. The weather patterns repeat. The stock market patterns repeat. The nations that rise and fall repeat. You can discern the patterns of the natural, but you can't discern the patterns of the spiritual. What's up with that? He was rebuking them. He was rebuking them so they could think outside their little box, you know. Anyway, I wasn't even going to do this recording tonight, but 44 minutes, it's hard to believe that I have that much to say. I've already said it all, and, but I still keep learning something to do. If you, if you do those two commandments, whatever you ask, he'll give it to you. It's what it says. You either believe it or you don't. But you got to ask stuff that's still in line with those not the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, but it, your your heart has to be in line with walking the way he walked. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect except for Jesus. But you are perfect. Perfect. You are purified because you have this hope that when you see him, you'll be like him, and you'll get your new body, and you'll be taken out of this Babylonian 
repeat time cycle. That's all it is, is a repeat. It's, every day is the same. Nothing new under the sun. They might have some new inventions, but what? <laughs> think about it. The inventions are just a reflection, I mean, of the human body. Just trying to make things easier. But you need resistance. You need, um, like the cell phones. Everybody thinks the cell phones are great. Yeah, but why do you become addicted? Why does it turn into an idol? Why does your cell phone turn into an idol? And even in that book, he says, little children, don't go into idol. Don't, don't follow idols. Your cell phone can be an idol. Your car can be an idol. Your house can be an idol. Your, your favorite movie star can be an idol. Working for Amazon can be an idol. It's all, idol. it's all idolatry. Little children, keep yourself from idols. God doesn't allow you to worship anything but Him. You know? And everything that you, everything that you get, all the stuff and all the responsibility, it's just more to keep your mind distracted from the spirit. You really have everything. Anyway, you know all things and you have everything you need. Just reach out by faith, grab it, make sure your heart's right, make sure you're in tune with those two commandments. Believe on His Son. Walk in love. And if you walk in love, you're walking in truth because truth and love, truth and agape are married. They go hand in hand. They're, you can't separate them. And so truth and agape and faith, it's all connected. When you look at a car, the tires, the steering wheel, the hood, the windshield, it's all connected. It's all one unit. So when you talk about the Christian walk, Truth, agape, and faith, it's all connected. You can't separate them. They're all connected. And as you approach that uh, zero point or whatever, that culmination or that understanding, as you approach that, that in Jesus is wholeness and completeness, and there's no darkness in Him. And so when you start to appropriate the spirit walk in a way that you see the whole pie, then all these divisions and all this noise and all this insanity around you, you just kind of, you kind of like Neo, they throw this bullet and you just move it down because you see the whole truth. And so you're not distracted by this little piecemeal person who's, who's screaming at you to look at this piece of the pie. What are you talking about, man? I, I eat the whole pie. I don't eat just pieces. And the whole, the truth is actually in every piece of the pie. The whole truth is in every piece. But I eat the whole pie. I don't eat just pieces. I'm not a piecemeal kind of person. I eat the whole thing. I want the whole truth. I don't want pieces of the pie. I want the whole pie. And so when you step into the whole truth, you become holy. You become holographic. Holographic is whole writ, whole graphene, graphy, holy written, completely written, the whole, holy, holy, holy. So when you see the whole pie, Jesus is the whole pie, and you step into that mindset, you're no longer fighting over little stupid stuff because it don't matter because it's just piecemeal. The reason they fight is because they take their little piece of the pie and say, you got to be a Baptist, or you got to be a Pentecostal, or you got to be a. We have more truth than them. What do you mean you have more? We're the closest to the truth. They'll say that. Let's talk to them. We're closest to the truth. I don't want to be close. I want the whole truth. And if you're admitting out of your mouth, you speak, they'll say it, every one of them. We're the closest to the truth. I want the whole truth. What are you talking about? See? They reveal that they worship a piece and not the whole. And I just read to you 
in First John, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things and you don't have a need for anybody to teach you. That's what it says. You either believe it and you experience it or you believe it and you're moving into an experience of that. And if you're not into that experience yet, just keep going. Because eventually, if you have the unction, because you're sealed with the Spirit of Truth, eventually you'll know all things. And I'm not saying that you can read minds. I'm not saying, you know what I'm saying. You can rightly divide the whole truth. But you can read. You you can if you learned body language good enough because everything's a word. If you learn body language, you can read their mind. <laughs> Whether it's on the job or you're dealing with the police or you're dealing with your your wife, eventually you already know what she's thinking. <laughs> she knows what you're thinking. You know what she's thinking. Your kids, you already know what they're thinking. When they're getting ready to try to do wrong, you already see it before they do it. <laughs> you know. So it might not be reading their mind per se, but you already know. And something else I wanted to talk about, but I don't know if I'll do it right now, is I was uh, I was unfolding the word cover, and I thought, is this a word that I, because I decoded this thing down to cut, turn, union, and flow. But the word cover is a combination of together, which is union, and uh being covered so the reason the reason a lot of times these uh, women that hate each other but they still go to the bathroom together or whatever they have that feeling of security because they're together with something and the reason these cults and these isms uh, get together because it's some kind of security feeling but God has you covered and so when you're together with God by faith you're covered That's another video or another audio. I wasn't really going to talk this long, but you don't want pe you don't want piecemeal. You want the whole truth. And you might say, "Well, how can I get the whole truth?" That's pride. No, it's not pride. Read Ephesians and read Colossians and compare the two, and you'll see they're saying the same thing. And then read Galatians and read Romans and you'll see they're all four books are saying the same thing. And read Revelation verse by verse and you'll see it's saying the same thing. From Genesis to Revelation, every book is saying the same thing. Believe on Jesus. Trust God. Believe on God. The weakness of man is not what you put your confidence on. You put your confidence in God. Even in the Old Testament, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Right there it is. This is Old Testament. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Deuteronomy or somewhere. Numbers maybe or something. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. If that's true in the Old Testament under law, what about the age of grace where you're sealed with the Holy Spirit? The Lord will fight for you you shall hold your peace. Apply that today. It's the same truth. It applies today just like it did under law. Law was just to bring you to Christ. They even had grace under law. That's what the sacrifices were, the redemptions before Jesus came. Even in the USA, we have redemption. We have lawyers, attorneys. You pay a redemption fee. When you go buy a product, you redeem that product. Even, even under law, there was grace. There's a thread of grace through the whole Bible. There's a thread of grace through the whole creation. You can't escape it because God is a God of grace because He created this place knowing that we would fall into sin, we deserve hell. But He, by the grace of God, it was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So grace is th threaded through all creation, through all the Bible. Grace is all through the Bible and it's through your 3D, it's through your life, it's through your marriage. It's only by the grace of God you're still married whoever you are. It's only by the grace of God that you get up out of bed tomorrow. It's only by the grace of God that you even heard me or I heard you or I learned from you or you learned from me. It's only by the grace of God that you have a deeper understanding than your preacher. And 
he's still stuck in his box. It's all by grace. That's the longest message I've ever done. I had no idea I was going to talk that long, but it just kept flowing, you know. And that's the way it works. <laughs>